InshaAllah the, the jama'ah is posting everywhere, they have covered all social media mashaAllah. Keep, keep barraging social media with posts and videos and articles, everyone. Everyone thinks to themselves, oh it doesn't matter if I don't do it. No, no, you do it. You do it because that one matters, every one matters and if 200, 300, 400, 500 people feel like that, we blanket, we blanket social media with this love, this ishq and uh, it's a medicine. And it's like a medicine against cancer, the 99% of all people have a horrific cancer and as soon as you give them a dose of Muhammadan love all sorts of horrible characteristics come out. Saying horrible things, trying to attack websites, trying to attack our social media sites and never click on anything. Anyone who's an administrator of any of our pages never click on a link that your page is under review, your page is, is in trouble. There's even a uh, page called Facebook discrepancy and it's I period N period C period and at the end it says click on this link. Facebook doesn't send anything like that. Facebook never sends messages to our administrators, they send everything through our emails if there's anything they need from us. But the, these sort of hackers and spammers non-stop trying to, to make difficulty. So in life any of our admins and moderators don't click on anything because they're trying to, to bring down things. And this is all because we spread the love of Prophet So alhamdulillah if you're doing something good you know that people must be attacking you. So keep up the good work, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah It has been described in the recent talks that the Divinely Fire of Taseen is the location of Manzil Qur'an, the location of which Allah Divinely speech emanates. How does this relate to Yasin, the heart of Holy Quran? Is Yasin inside of Taseen? Taseen is the fire, Yasin is the reality of that heart. And we get into that next month because first we have to get to the fire. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Then you enter into the entire house, waqal bil mu'min baytullah. So Yasin, we enter into the <coughs> 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 The heart of Allah's believer, Yaseen and representing Habibullah So these are the immense realities of Prophet And that's why these people, other people say, we don't know what these unconnected letters stand for. So they make general statements but those statements basically show they don't know what they stand for. But there must be people whom Allah has given the encryption codes. So this is just their disclaimer showing they don't know. But these huruf, these realities they're all keys from Prophet into the realities of Holy Qur'an which is Allah's uncreated Divinely speech that can't be even understood. If you're reading paper and ink that's not it. The paper and ink is merely a, 
a means into this depth of this reality. But when we reach the real reality, the Qur'an is reading us. The lights are looking to us and Allah's speech dressing the heart and soul. And it can only be achieved with the love of Prophet because we have to be in the Muhammadan ocean to reach to this Muhammadan heart which is a burning bush. And, on, and then that bush is the Divinely speech that in that fire is the Divinely speech of Allah So these are immense, these are immense lights and immense blessings. InshaAllah guide us and take us deeper into these realities and that people appreciate what they have and not be distracted by what they want because what they want is from shaitan, right? That's why social media exists is to make our eyes to be hungry. If you meditate you close your eyes, you, you watch 10 minutes you want to buy new shoes, new car, new, new everything because that's the design that shaitan has. So it means desires and wants are coming from shaitan massively in, in a speed that unimaginable. But you know we balance our life and then it teaches us meditate. At least you cut from that reality and close your eyes and connect your heart and then to realize what Allah wants, what Allah has given as a gift. And if that gift should open, what type of contentment and blessings and lights begin to enter into the servant, to their homes, to their families and communities is immense, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What can we do to grow the flame that we take from our shaykh? And how do we prevent it from being put out? Forgive my bad manners. That's the whole process of the tariqah. That you do your salawat, you do your awrad, you do your khidmat so that you become sincere. But then keep your focus on the shaykh. I told you that if you give hamburgers that doesn't light your heart with this secret. This just gives you the qualifications of being clean and sincere that doesn't light your heart because you have to reach to the shaykh where the flame is emanating from. So the people whom are sincere they put their faith in action, they do the actions that Allah finds pleasing. As a result they become sincere. When they're sincere and they directed themselves towards the flame, a moth to the flame Where's the where's the, the, the flame? We hear the poetry, what's the, the shahid, what's that? You said you know that one, Abid Parveen? Let's go. Raj is with you tonight, he can do also with the Abidah. This is about the journey of a moth to the flame. Chahe to shisha ban ja, ji chahe paimana ban ja, shisha paimana kya ban la, mein ban ja, mein khana ban ja. Main ban kar, main khana ban kar, masti ka afsana ban ja, masti ka afsana ban kar, hasti se be gana ban ja. Hasti se be gana hona, masti ka afsana banna, is hone se 
इस बनने से अच्छा है दीवाना बन जा दीवाना बन जाने से दीवाना होना अच्छा है दीवाना होने से अच्छा खाक दरे जाना ना बन जा खाक दरे जाना ना क्या है पहले दिल की आँख कसरमा शम्मा के दिल की ठंडक बन जा नूर दिले पर वाना बन जा सीख जहीन के दिल से जलना काहे को हर शम्मा पे जलना अपनी आग में खुद जल जाए तू ऐसा परवाना बन जा अपनी आग में खुद जल जाए तू ऐसा परवाना बन जा means we know the poetry be like a moth to the flame but people kind of forget what is the flame so means the nourishment of that light is the heart of the shaykhs because they carry the Muhammadan light, they carry the reality of Taseen within them, they carry the realities of Yaseen within them and all of these uloom and these knowledges emanating as a proof of what they carry. So it's like a campfire, a flame. Your admission into that, that jaman, that diwana, the diwan means the association of these people. Your entrance is your good deeds and good character. You do your charity to show you have good character. You don't fight and yell and scream so that you have good character. Those souls are admitted to sit in that circle. Not everyone whom thinks they're coming is admitted into that, they have to pass with their good deeds and good character. There may be many in the association but that doesn't mean they sit around that flame. So don't think your deeds are the one that light you, your deeds gave you an admission into that association, into that diwan. As a result of entering into that diwan you'll be presented to sit and anyone who sits in the circumference of that fire becomes lit from that fire. Unto the end of that knot they begin to teach that don't just sit, don't just sit with them but be from them. That you enter into that immense love and ishq by all that they prescribe for you so that you can feel yourself catching fire and changing. You heat up and you begin to burn and the immensity of your love and sincerity and then as a result you've caught in fire. If you've caught in fire then alhamdulillah anywhere and any, anything around you, anything or near you is blessed. And this is the realities of tariqah but this is why the tariqah has its discipline. Otherwise if you think there's four fires and I'll sit a little bit with this one and I'll sit a little bit with that one, you will never catch any type of fire. Because the sincerity of your actions and deeds allows your soul to draw near, not your physicality. Your physicality may think that it's sitting with everyone. But it's not drawing near to their soul, it's the good deeds and consistent actions that allows a nearness. You be with whom you love and when you love your whom you love will be with you. 
So as a result of the reality of that hadith, the people are doing good, they're sincere, they're, they're putting their faith in action, they make their comments, you see their posts everywhere. <coughs> the nazar is gaining now an entrance that this soul should come near. And as a result of coming near in, in the khudur of the shaykh, because they have the muhabbat with their good deeds, good actions, their charities, all of these things gave them a muhabbat and love because Allah finds satisfaction. But how to keep the hudur of the shaykh? Means then they begin to meditate because if you want to be with whom you love you would be meditating all the time to be with them, to connect with them, to feel the energy from their presence. And as a result of that meditation these flames would be hitting the heart and they feel themselves catching, they feel themselves burning, they feel themselves with immense energies and lights coming into their hearts. Then what happens? They begin to become lit and become in the oceans of fana. Hasti o masti, what was what we were reciting? These are the states of fana where they're present and then they're lost, they, they've lost themselves. They become present in the shaykh and they lose their own identity. Then they come back to who they are. It's a continuous flux between these different hijabs and veils for the one whom is dressed with these fires and these lights and these realities. So it means this is an immense ocean of realities. And everything we do, everything we say and everything we comment is showing this reality to the shaykh and to the student, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum shaykh Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Sayyidi, hope you are well. Just wondering, what is the most powerful dua zikr is for blockages of rizq? I have began praying five times a day for just under a year now and doing daily zikr, but it seems like I have a blockage of rizq. Or if I try a new business, I seem to be losing money and can't keep money. Can you please provide me with some guidance? Jazakallah, Shaykh. Alaykum <laughs> Alhamdulillah, just you must be coming new so you do the meditation and the, the realities of the first month Surat, no the second month Surat Al-Kahf we already covered and this is one of the first principles of the tariqah is the, the boat and the rizq of people is a distraction and because the rizq dropped you made a comment. So you see how it works because if your rizq is just flowing like the ocean you definitely wouldn't be on this channel. So it means Allah wants something. So first give Allah what He wants before you try to achieve what you want because people want it like fast food, give me a quick du'a so I can get my gas back on and my car has to start going back onto the racetrack but it doesn't work like that. Allah took the car off the track means it's not really a time for racing anymore. Come park your car, learn how to meditate, how to contemplate, how to build yourself something's coming. That's more important than trying to conquer the earth and to start businesses and make your connection. Make your connection with the shaykhs, make your connection with your heart and your tafakkur. When all of that's good the sustenance will come and you'll know who owns that sustenance. Means you become servant of Allah but not that Allah serves you. Not you only but anybody who's asking. Everyone wants Allah to grant them and listen to them but we're here to listen to Allah And Allah wants something now from us, difficulties are coming and it's time to prepare ourselves for these difficulties. Make the connection, make the energies, make ourselves solid and have this love for Prophet and the rest open easily inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, in regards to initiating Fatima's our helping hand, 
uh, have, we have some concerns. We had previously attempted, we ordered the shirts and started organizing a team, etc. And uh, we were put under quite a few interesting conditions. Every project was canceled. We thought we would try just at least do the food service, but we noticed that suddenly our car would either break down, laptop broken, phone broken, etc. Anyways, we understood that maybe this is not what we should be doing. So we withdrew from that wish and all money that we received during the project, we donate to a family that was in great need. After this experience, I'm not sure how we could do such a project in our city. Do you have any advice? Yeah, you have to email us, not on live video. That's not going to give you a solution. You email us the concern you have and it's not easy picking up a sword and now fighting against the devil. So you have to have permission to do it, you have to ask us where it's going to be taking place, how it's going to be taking place and all the details. We probably don't have the details if you're doing this on live video on YouTube. So that is an answer for you right there because if you don't have the permission and you just unsheath the sword, I don't think shaitan is going to let you to be successful in, in achieving what you're trying to achieve. So everything has to be with ijazah, with permission, with a good intention and we have to understand what's happening. You're getting the shirt, do you have taweezes? Then you got a shirt, you want to go give some hamburgers, where do you want to give a sandwich, where do you want to give some rice or, or biryani or something. So everything has to be detailed and, and through approvals with us and that's helped me at nurmuhammad.com. Nothing happens without my eyes being involved. So that's why we say email us at helpme at nurmuhammad.com so that I know, then once I know the appropriate people will know and the whole communication will begin to take place, inshaAllah. Uh, another long message Sayyidi uh, uh -oh. from email, uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah I'm an infinity alignment therapist. I work with various type of clients who are under serious afflictions such as cancer patients as well, going through depression, anxiety, etc. I'm quite concerned since I'm not as to whether I'm able to carry on my work after hearing the talks. Since these clients are in need of support but I'm not sure if I'm causing difficulty upon myself. But I do enjoy my work, it allows me to see our clients progressing since during treatment they too appreciate the zikr and your lectures. Most of my clients are not Muslim yet they have adopted the wudu and the zikr as part of their daily routine. We are grateful for all your videos, we use them and introduce them to our clients and they are ever so grateful. Am I allowed to carry this work? It is paid work but 90% of my clients I don't charge. We understand their financial condition. Instead, we advise them to donate towards Fatima Zara Helping Hand or any close relatives which may be in need of financial support. Can you please advise us in this regard as this is our only source of income? Ooh, this is a long question. <laughs> we have many people in healthcare. Doctors, nurses, practitioners, that's why <coughs> the books are important. That if you're truly interested you have to read the books. You have to read the book on meditation and the book on energy. The healing power, the what, healing power of angelic energy. Why? Because you have to be, we have to be familiar with energy. That if we're going to give energy we're going to receive energy. If somebody is deficient in their energy and they have a sickness or something is offset causing a dis-ease and causing a, a, a discomfort, causing a, something in their mental capacity, there's going to be an exchange of energy, doesn't just go nowhere, it's going to pass through the servant. So that's the issue, there's one servant who's deficient and the other servant may be excessive. They do their practices, they meditate, they have a, an ability and understanding. So then Prophet gave to us all of these different understandings. The servant has to keep wudu, the servant has to keep salatul wudu, the servant keeps their salawats, their training, keeping their distance, understanding that 
any type of physical sort of touching is going to have a, a direct unfiltered energy flowing into the servant. So they have to try to use their cane or an object, something so there's no direct physical contact if possible, when possible. So all of those in the energy book it, it describes how this flow of energy is taking place and how to protect oneself. Meditation teaches that like I'm a scuba diver, deep sea diver and I need somebody to watch the air tank as I'm going down. Nobody dives with an air tank and nobody up on the top because you could go down very deep and all of a sudden something happens and you can't breathe. And you're so far down you won't be able to have a breath to come up. So it's usually two people like a team, somebody's watching, somebody's diving. Means this is the concept of the meditation that I'm asking to connect with you, I'm asking for the conveyance of energy, I'm asking for your nazar, your vision upon me not only in my meditation but as soon as I'm about to get into my practices and my actions. Once you're good and proficient in the meditation means as soon as you're about to see your clients and customers or, or a difficult client you would make your madad. You would make sure you're in wudu, you would make your madad, you would understand your energy practices and that you would ask for that madad in dealing with people so that you're protected. So that if any energy comes to you it's not trying to stick on to you. If dealing with people who mentally have energies their energy may be very difficult because something may have attached to them making them like that. So again the practitioner has to be sort of trained in these spiritual practices. And the spiritual practices the, the most powerful is the madad, that I have the ta'weez, I have the connection with my shaykh, I have the permission from my shaykh and as soon as I make my madad then I go to do the work that I've been trained to do. It's a whole process so definitely there are many, many practitioners who are successfully practicing and they keep their connection, their practices and everything. But to just go without all of that, uh, you, you don't need us to say anything. Look at the national statistics, psychologists, psychiatrists have the highest suicide rate. Why? Because of the energy of the people they deal with and if they don't believe in energy and all day long they're just seeing people with all sorts of mental issues, all sorts of possessions because they don't say they're possessed, they just say it's something off with them. But those are possessions many of which are, are, are energies and as a result it sticks onto them and that harms them and their families. And say so the next highest rate are dentists, why? Because they stick their hands in the mouth of people and the mouth is a source of immense negative energies. Because all of the intake of food and drink and breath is all the mouth, it's the entryway for energy to enter into the system, to the heart and to the lungs. So yes, all of these are, are true, all of these are real and you can look at all the Western statistics to give you an understanding of, of spiritual ailments and sicknesses, so that's why it's so high. Because they don't do wudu, they don't do their madad, they don't wear taweezes, they don't believe that there's an energy reason for these events that are happening. Until they do then they won't be protected and they suffer the most from dealing with people. We use the siwak as a sunnah was a defense against that so that it would take out all the negative energy from the mouth. As soon as we make the siwak it grounds and takes all the negative energy from the mouth so that the mouth is grounded and this negative energy doesn't enter into the heart. And they have all sorts of studies that the energies and the plaque on the teeth actually is the leading cause of heart attacks, tooth decay causes heart, heart attacks. And this all the mouth is related to the body. Then they do these systems in dentistry now they're finding out is this root canal where they take out a tooth and but leave the tooth in your mouth, they take everything out and leave something dead within your mouth. And so this can be the cause of many sicknesses, many cancers.
Because anything dead within you, you have to take it out. You don't keep something dead within you and you just sort of carry it for 10 years. It, it causes a nar, nar, narcosis, narcosis or something. So when you carry something dead, it's not something to, to carry within your body. Something dead has to be taken out. So it means these are all the energy trainings. So it's important that we study the energies, understand the energy systems and, and how to protect ourselves against negative energy, inshaAllah. We have two similar type questions, Sayyidi, so we'll ask. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Thank you so much for your wisdom, I've learned many great things from you and I have another favour to ask. Could you please enlighten us about what the Jewish mysticism Kabbalah is all about and its relation with Islam? Another question, could you please tell us what the Chinese system Taoism is and its relation with, this, in, with Islam? As there are many really similar things that match and is, and is it related to the hadith which says, seek knowledge even if you have to venture to China? Yeah. Our, our understanding is what Prophet brought is the final because the king arrives and brings the reality of the kingdom. So the final message like Qur'an, it shines above any book. Any book you say holy is nothing, nothing, not even a paper of it is in comparison to the holy Qur'an. And we proved that, that all religions now have left their reality. The only real religion upon this earth is Islam because it adheres to the will of Allah has not compromised and is not uh, preparing themselves for the arrival of a man who will call himself God because they all became now mushrik. Mushrik is when you follow somebody who will call himself a God and become partners with Allah which is, the, is a great abomination in religion. So Islam has nothing like that, no hadith like that, no preparation for that so we're clear from that. So it becomes the only religion that's not waiting for somebody to call themselves a god. So Islam is pure, what Prophet brought is pure. So it is the truth, anyone from a different background had a percentage of the truth. Not that they were similar but they were imitated parts of a truth until the whole truth came. The whole truth is the truth and nothing but the truth, I swear by God. They ask you in court of law, is this the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, that's it. So when Prophet brought the truth everybody said, oh this is so similar. No, yours was at 60%, yours was at 70%, yours was at 10% because it took only a percentage of the truth. But when Prophet brings and seal upon it, it is the truth, the Divinely truth. So it means that Islamic spirituality then is the way to the heart of Prophet whom holds the key. That through Muhammadun Rasulullah is the only door to La ilaha illallah. So now what? What will Zen do? What will Buddha do? What will the other guys do? Then they're going to get to the heart of Prophet with their practices. Doesn't even matter if it was 30% true, 40% true, it's not opening the key to the heart of Prophet So it has no value in the last days. It's a, a, a great war is beginning, a war against souls and humanity, a great difficulty is coming. If we don't have the key of Muhammadun Rasulullah Nothing will help, nothing will help. إِذَا جَاءَ النَّاسُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتِ رَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يُدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ A great day is coming where mankind will come in droves. Why? Because they'll take their key 
they'll try to use it and say, this key is rubbish and garbage, plastic and throw it. It was okay for entertainment, it was okay to pacify my mind, it was okay when everything was a blue beautiful sunny day and driving by Kentucky Fried Chicken. But when the demons begin to come, shaitans begin to come, sicknesses begin to come, that plastic key won't do nothing. So then why Allah is describing a day will come when Nasrullah that means the, the opening for mankind will come in droves into this reality. Why? Because they see that these people are the only ones with a key for help. And already much of Islamic law will begin to be implemented around the world in dealing with crime, how Islamic law will deal with people. No, no you don't chop, you don't uh, steal anything, you'll be missing your fingers, you don't do like this, you'll be beaten with a stick, you definitely don't rape children, everything will be cut off you until the nafs of people see what Sayyidina Mahdi is bringing upon this earth, nobody will move left and right in an inappropriate way. But now everybody has let their nafs do what it wants and this is the danger we face, this is the world that we face. So day is coming, a coming and Allah's religion is upon this earth, Allah's kingdom is coming upon this earth. So what we need and what people need is the Muhammadan key. If we want to reach to the power stations and the power oceans, every other key has expired. Like a room key in a hotel, the code is finished. The only key that is opening is under the authority of Muhammadun Rasulullah InshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Does Nafs al Amara ever go away or does it still remain and we rise above it? Yeah, it goes away with Divinely Knowledges. If it, if a element of it stays then it would continuously drag us down. So the practices and the actions that we do is to rise above that. The thumma amanu, thumma kafaru, there would be no sincerity. The one whom one day believes and disbelieves, amara is to completely disbelieve in which you don't believe in Allah and you only believe in yourself like a narcissist. So that element in the person has to die. And that's why and we describe that in the levels of the soul, it truly only dies by the medicine of Divine knowledges and realities. Just attending Jummah doesn't make that go away, those are not haqqaiqs and realities. That's why you can see people in the masjid pray Jummah and they are very amara, they're very evil and wicked. Their character remains bad, they're, they're how they transact at work and business and they beat their employees, they are horrible things you can see. Social media shows them all around the world, they're all going for Jummah. So the amara stays within them even though they accepted Islam, live in Islam, born in Islam. But in those sobats it taught that the only remedy for this rebellious nafs is Divinely food and the shaykhs because they have to give this food and lift the servant out of that state of disbelief so that they stay within the associations, they do their zikr, they do their salawats, they, they're fed from Divinely knowledges and realities and that that horrific element within them goes away and burned away in which they don't harm, they don't rebel, they don't disbelieve in Allah so this is a, a gift that Allah gives to the nation by those whom follow guidance and accompany the guides, the Muhammadan guides. And that's when you see them, you see it all over social media, these characters and these, these types of people and they're everyday Muslims. 
So for that to go then they have to be fed Divinely knowledges, Divinely knowledges are only fed within the tariqahs, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What is the sickness of narcissism and its cure in spirituality? We just said is Amara. When the, when the servant thinks of themselves and <coughs> their ananiya, there's a pharaoh. So the, 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 the biggest narcissist known is Pharaoh. So I'm, I'm Allah. He said, no you're not Allah, Allah brings life and death. He says, okay bring me two people. He killed one and let one free. He said, look I just caused death and I gave life. So this is a narcissist and the pharaonic character is the ananiya, it's about I, I, I in which their focus is themselves to the extent that they don't care who they destroy in the process of glorifying themselves. So this is, this is amara. So this is only, it's only cures Divinely food in which this I is not allowed anymore and the I has to be destroyed. And that we never say I, we say inshaAllah the kingdom, the heavens, we as in the heavenly kingdom and that not to talk of ourselves in I because that represents then the ananiya and the ego trying to, to represent itself and present itself. So again the, the destruction of that character is in the Divinely knowledges and accompanying the shaykhs in which they'll be taught then to not be destructive, not to think of oneself and to live a life of service, khidmat. That's why we say put your faith in action. A narcissist will never try to serve others unless it's a reason to serve themselves. So serving others without the expectation of anything in return, complete charity. They go out and they feed people, they're not expecting to get paid for feeding people, they're not expecting you know news clippings so that we get credit for it. But to go out and to be of service to Allah's creation it will destroy that type of character in which they begin to live a life of service that it's uh, as important for me to feed myself and to feed others so that everybody eats and that everybody has a, has a place and is taken care of to the best of our abilities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How can we help someone who died who is not Muslim? Pray for them, make a water well and charities for them. All actions in Allah's ways are counted, Sadaqat Jariya is the jariya for any soul. So we have I think we've given a talk before, somebody has emailed before that they had a relative, they saw that was in a bad shape, they made a well for them and then they had a dream that the person was very happy in the dream. Everything we do on this earth in this Muhammadan hand is going to have an immense effect in akhirah. We just described all these realities of Prophet imagine then those whom work for that reality. So then they're, they're doing things directly from that fire, you're making a well for souls directly from that reality. No doubt it reaches them, dresses them, blesses them, nourishes them. If they're in difficulty and in, in heat that well is a water that extinguishes every reality and that well in paradise becomes a kawthar for them. If it was water on earth for these awliya it's a kawthar in heavens. They're not going to give you water in heavens, they took from you something in earth but they're the recipients of the kawthar. They're going to give you from the best of what they have in heavens is the kawthar. So this is what we said, drawing near to the shaykhs is not something your mind understands. You did something and built water but they in exchange gave you from the kawthar to drink and to, to bless yourself, your children, your family, your descendants and your loved ones. You gave to eat 
In this dunya you put food, you put qurban, you put what Allah is going to give you from the hand of this awliya to eat in paradise. A food that grant you complete shifa, grant you complete healing, take away all the difficulties, all these badnesses and that this food and sustenance becomes for us to sit at the table with Sayyidina Muhammad In fi dunya hasanat wa akhirah hasanat wa kina adab nar means that the immense realities of blessings of this dunya and the blessings of akhirah and that they take away the fires of difficulty. So these are the immense realities that Allah opens. That not only they feed you all these realities but anything we do with them has an immense reality in paradise. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Suri. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.